Living History, World War II Stories is told by those who were there. As the Japanese Empire crumbled in 1945, the rising sun gathered its forces for a last stand against an expected U.S. invasion at the island of Okinawa. Throughout March of 1945, the American Navy closed in on Okinawa, 350 miles from Japan. Easter Sunday, April 1st, 1945, 170,000 American combat troops head toward shore. The Japanese decided to make their stand at two ends of the island, but the strongest defensive position was at the Shuri Line to the south, where they could hide in caves and hills. Here, they would make their final stand of World War II. We landed the first day of, the, of April uh, on uh, Easter, and uh, we landed right after the first division had landed. They'd, they'd secured the first part of the island. Third day, I moved to the third rifle platoon, and that was the one that the company commander had had on Pelham lucky on when we went across to the first division because there was just a few people hurt and there was, really wasn't a lot of resistance as they moved across the island. But then when they were waiting and the army got in trouble on the, going south, well then they called them the first division in. You wonder when and then when it happens you're, <laughs> you're going in, you're green and you're wondering what you're going to do. But uh, uh, my company commander, when I met him, was very nice and, uh, and he said, I hope you've been through everything that they, and understand what they taught you. And I said, well, I feel I do. And he said, well, that's all we can ask. Uh, Tommy Carr, who's going to be your platoon sergeant, I had, and I know him real well, and he'll help you. And I think you two will get along just fine. We well, really just started south, and then we went into the different draws, the Wanna Draw, and all of this and that, and into Sherry Castle and on south. Uh, a lot of it tanks couldn't get through. Yeah. Yeah. And then you know it was we had that muddy session there where it really rained and rained and rained, and the mud was yay deep, and and a, a fellow by the name of Tobin got hit from St. Louis and when I ended up getting the third platoon. Curly knew that platoon and he thought so much of it that he trusted it. <clears throat> Curly, uh, he made us the point. Anytime we moved, from then on out, <laughs> my platoon was the point. And the point is, you're out in front. I've been, I've been platoon leader for eight days. And we uh, we were on a, a ridge, and uh, we knew that the Japanese was underneath us. So the next morning, I saddled a platoon up, and we started down there, and they let us all, my whole platoon, get down in this valley, and then here they come out from these caves in among us, mm -hmm. and they were running in among us. And <laughs> I. <laughs> I started to shoot one with a carbine and I pushed for the safety and I pushed the deal and the magazine fell out. <laughs> I just threw that carbine away. It wasn't the use of having it. <laughs> but it, it wasn't funny at the time, but it is now. Yeah. But we were, I uh, got 12 boys hurt, but I didn't get a one killed and I got them all out. We come into an area. Surely, Castle was 800 yards from it. Curly. Sent me, sent our mop to me one day. We were back here by the railroad track, and he said, "You go across and get up on the ridge." Well, we got about halfway out there on a little hill, and that was far as we go. And we got pinned down, and we couldn't come back, or we couldn't go. We were out there for three days, but we were the first ones up on the Sherry Castle area. We got settled and we worked in with the tank and 
with the tank commander and got ourselves all working together and took off up the side of the hill, but they let us get about halfway up and they stopped us. And we just couldn't, we didn't have enough firepower to get on to the top of it, so we come down and we still spent that night and the next morning he sent Duncan and Duncan didn't get to the top of it and he sent Peterson the next morning with the first platoon and Peterson had a Thompson submachine gun and one of the shells hit his uh, stock and it sent splitters in his hand so he brought his platoon back and we still didn't have the hill so I said, well, if you'll give me everybody we've got left out of the, the platoons, because we've got people hurt each day, all of us have, and what we've got left out of the machine gun platoon, we'll take that sucker this next morning. So he let me have them, and when I hollered, let's go over the top, well, we all jumped up and run over it, got up to it, and got over the top of it, and got in among them, and we wiped them out, and we had the top of the hill.